In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it says, Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Faithfulness is required in serving the Lord. And what is faithfulness? The Bible tells us that in, Mark, in Matthew chapter 24, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, gave us an example of faithfulness. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 51. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his house, over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. Let's stop there. A faithful servant. When we say serving God, serving the Lord faithfully, we are saying that you are doing what the Lord wants you to do when you are supposed to do it. Not when you want to do it, but when you are supposed to do it. Doing what God has asked you to do at the time he has asked you to do it. That is serving the Lord. We cannot say we are serving the Lord in our own time, in our own way, in our own manner. No, there is a manner by which we will serve the Lord. And he wants us to serve in that manner. So when we are serving the Lord, we should be serving faithfully. Doing what he wants us to do at the time he wants us to do it. Serve faithfully. In John chapter 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. The Lord uh, said there, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. We are to serve bearing fruit. That is our serving the Lord must be fruitful. Martha's service was not fruitful because she wasn't doing the needful. She was doing what she thought was the needful, but not what was the needful. So we don't serve doing what we think we should do. We serve doing what the Lord wants us to do. We serve wholeheartedly doing what God says we should do. He said that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. God wants us to be fruitful in our service of him. That brings me to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. How, how are we to serve? How do we serve the Lord? Verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with you by the mercies of God. Because of all the sacrifice that Jesus did in bringing you out of sin and sanctifying you, saving you from sin, that you present your bodies, offer yourself to present, this, give yourself as an offering to God, including your body. And when we talk of your body, your eyes, your brain, your ears, your hands, your feet, your reproductive organs, your mouth, every part of your body, your internal organs, everything, submit to God. Offer it to God. In, in, in Leviticus, we read about the whole bond offering that is all given, to, wholly presented to God and is burnt up. Not to be used by anybody. That offering signaled the dedication and devotion of the offerer to God. So the Bible is telling us here that we should offer ourselves as devoted people, as dedicated people. Let me let me just pause here. I'm coming back to Romans uh, chapter 12 verse 1. But let's look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And um, we will read verse 1 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. Moreover, brethren, 
we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberty, of their liberality. These were, these were poor people. These were people facing life challenges. They were facing afflictions. Yet they abounded in joy in those afflictions. He says, for I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Nobody compelled them. Nobody forced them. You should not be forced to serve God. You should not be compelled to serve God. Imploring us with much urgency or entreaty that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So the important thing is that you must give yourself to offer yourself to the Lord. Present yourself to God. When you have presented yourself to God, every part of you now goes. Your money, your time, your energy, everything goes into it. That is how we serve God. We serve God by offering ourselves first. And then any other thing that God wants, it goes. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, the Bible says, And he died, that Jesus died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. This is what is being said in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Offer yourselves to God. Present yourself to God. Give yourself unto God as a, 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 a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. One that is alive, not one that is dead. One that is active. Some people will go and walk and labor and do everything. Then when it is, when they are around age 70 and they are retired from their secular work, then they say they want to serve God. No. Serve God when you have the energy. While you are in your youth. While you are strong. A time will come when you will not be able to serve God actively. Yes, in your old age you can still serve God. But you will not be as actively as when you are young. Don't spend your youth your youthful years, your youthful time, doing strange things. Use it to serve God and use it to serve him appropriately. A living sacrifice, a whole bond offering that is dedicated and devoted to the Lord. Give yourself to him. Surrender yourself to him. Present yourself. Take yourself to the Lord and say, Father, use me as you want to use me. And it, it talks about a living sacrifice, holy you have to be holy, without spot, without blemish. Let's not be like the children of Israel. Let's read that in Malachi. Who, who went and started bringing strange, presenting strange gifts to God. Malachi chapter 1. I read from verse 6. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? says the Lord of hosts, to you priests who despise my name. Yet, you say, in what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar. But say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying, the table of the Lord is contemptible, that there, there's no need to take anything good there, just take anything. God will take anything. You know, we have that teaching. God will, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. No, God does not use anything. He will use you, but first he will clean you up. And he expects you to remain clean. In verse 8 it says, And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably? Says the Lord of hosts. But now entreat God's favor, that he may be gracious to us, while this is being done by your hands. Will he accept you favorably? Says the Lord of hosts. You now go and say, hey, please, entreat God on our behalf. Let him accept us. When you have gone to pre pre present blind, lame, uh, 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 halt offerings to God. Offerings that are a, a, a contempt to the table of the Lord. Who is there, even among you, who would shut the doors? Who, are, who among the priests will even shut the doors? So that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? Because it's vanity. Trying to serve God in sin is vain. 
It's not going to be acceptable. Trying to serve God with, with spots and blemishes is, is, is vain. Uh, it says, so, let me read again, uh, verse 10 again. Who is there even among you who would shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun, of the sun even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place, incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. You know, we, we, we have belittled the name of God amongst the Gentiles, amongst the unbelievers, because we are doing the most contemptible things. We say God will accept anybody, and then people go to church anyhow. There is no righteousness in the way they, in the way they dress, no righteousness in the way they speak, nothing that is righteous in the way we conduct ourselves, even when we go to church. And so people around look at it and say, what is in that church, Seth? We hear stories of the kind of crazy things that pastors are doing these days. In verse 12, it says, but you profane it. You profane the name of the Lord. In that you say the table of the Lord is defiled. And its fruit, its food is contemptible. It doesn't matter. We can take anything there. We, we, make, we make drug addicts, pastors. I don't know what the hunger is to, for ordination that we ordain all kinds of people to be pastors. In verse 12, it says, you also say, Oh, what a weariness. And you snare at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick. Thus you bring an offering. Should I accept this from your hand, says the Lord? You go and steal from the government till. You steal from your, from your, from your uh, employers. You, you, you do deals. And then you bring the, the result of that deal. And you say you are presenting it to God as an offering. Am I going to accept such a thing? That's a stolen good. You go and prostitute yourself and you bring money and say you're praying offering. Is, that, is God supposed to accept that at your hands? In verse 14, it says, But cursed be the deceiver who has in his flock a male and takes a vow, but sacrifice to the Lord what is, what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. Brethren, God is interested in our being holy. It's not just something that is doing for fun. Paul wrote, uh, Peter wrote, I think in First in First Peter chapter one, is it verse fifteen to seventeen there about? He says, "Be holy, for I am." God says, "Be holy, because I I am holy." So we must be holy. We do not present uh, blemished things to God. We present holy things unto God. The Bible says that the Lord is coming for a church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. That's Ephesians chapter five verse twenty seven, and God is interested in that kind of a church, serving him. He's not interested in uh, strange people serving him. He wants people who, who, would, who would give everything to him, give their lives, be devoted to him, be holy. And then he says, acceptable, acceptable to God. That is people who are well-pleasing unto God. The Bible says that without faith, we cannot please God. So we're not just talking of being holy, but walking in a manner that is acceptable by faith, trusting God. And then the Bible now says, this is your reasonable, rational, or logical service. Why is it rational? Because for all that God has done for you, the least you can do is to serve him. That's the least you can do. So it says it's your rational, your logical, your reasonable service unto God, or your reasonable act of worship before God. Our service to God is also an act of worship. In Joshua chapter 24, we won't have time to read that, from 14 to 25, uh, from 14 to 24, Joshua 24, 14 to 24, you can, you can read that on your own. When Joshua challenged the people that they should serve the Lord, that they should serve him in sincerity and in truth, and then uh, he goes on to say that, well, if you say you will not serve God, choose who you want to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people said, we will serve God. And they began to speak about what God had done for them and everything. And Joshua said to them eventually, he said, you cannot serve God because he's a holy God, because he's a jealous God. What was Joshua saying there? Joshua said, you need to know who you want to serve. 
Don't serve him because of all, just because he had done this, he had done this. No, serve him because of who he is. He says he is a jealous God. After he has, after he has helped you, if you should, if you should forsake him, he will turn around and do you evil. So you need to know who you are serving. In John chapter 4, John chapter 4, the Lord Jesus Christ said that we are to serve God in spirit and in truth. That is. We are to serve God under the influence of the Holy Spirit. We are to serve God by the Holy Spirit and with a pure heart, with a clean heart, with a heart that is yielded to God, a heart that is acceptable to God in spirit and in truth. God is looking for such people to worship him, to serve him. The word service and worship are actually used interchangeably because in serving God, what you are doing is actually worshiping God. Worship is not just limited to the time when you stay in one corner and you are singing, you are lifting your hands, you are bowing down to God, you are lying prostrate. No, even the, the things that we do, our going out, our going to where we are going is worship. What is the What does the word worship really mean? The word worship means to value someone, the worth, the worthiness of that person. If you valued God, if God is worthy of our worship, then we would obey him. But when God says we should do something and we don't do it, what we have done is to devalue him. That is, we are not worshipping him. It means we are not serving him. So when Martha was running all over the place, she was not serving the Lord. She was serving herself. She wanted to make the Lord Jesus Christ happy by what she will bring. But it was what the Lord wanted that would make him happy. Not what she was bringing, but that's what she thought. She thought by doing this, she will be better. And when she saw that Martha, Mary was not joining her in doing it. She, she, she went to the Lord to say, force her to come. Say, no, I can't. Mary has chosen that good part. You need to come and sit down and hear the word. You are, you are troubled about men. You are anxious. You need to hear the word of God that will calm you down. Many of us are running to many places, listening to many messages. These messages make us run all over the place. They challenge us to go and be rich. They challenge us to go and do something. Challenge us to go and do this. But what is the Lord saying to you? That is the question. And we never focus on what the Lord is saying. We focus more on what other people are saying. And we like those messages. Because they make us active. They make us run all over the place. And yet sometimes all God is saying is be still and know that I am God. How do we serve the Lord? Let me go back to Romans 12 again and continue to read. This time around, I will read from verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. I've caught a lot of uh, some verses there, but you can read later. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. God gives us gifts when we come to him. He says, use those gifts, put them to use. Paul challenged Timothy. He said, stir up the gift that's in you by the laying on of... When I laid hands on you, gifts came up to you. Stir it up, use them. It's time for us to use the gifts of God. The gifts of God are just sitting down dormant in many of us. Dormant, doing nothing. We have abandoned it and we are running all over the place. Serving our own purpose. Meanwhile, he has given us all that we need to serve him. But we have packed it aside. He says, use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion of our faith. Don't prophesy more than is necessary. Don't prophesy the way one big prophet is prophesying. Prophesy according to how much God has, has helped you. And leave it there. Uh, or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Don't give more than you can give. Give what you have, what God has given you to give. Give. But don't give grumbling. Give with joy. Give with excitement. Show mercy with cheerfulness. In verse 9 it says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Let our love be love indeed. Not hypocritical love. Where we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are saying I love you, but in, at the back of our hands, at the back, uh, behind us, we are, our hand is behind us, and we are holding a dagger. 
waiting for an opportune time to plunge it into the heart of that man that we just told that we love. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. This is, this is the holy living, the acceptable way by which we serve God. In verse 10, it says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another. Humility, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. With fervency, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not, let, do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It tells us how to serve God. Serve him. Don't, don't do what is evil and say, well, he did this to me. No. Be kind to all men. Do what is good. Serve the Lord. Be fervent. Be urgent. Stop procrastinating. Follow peace with all men. Don't be the one that is the cause of, of trouble in, in your neighborhood or in the church. There are people, once they enter into a church, the whole church scatters. They, they, cannot, be, they cannot live at peace with anybody. That's not who we are supposed to be. 